Charles Spurgeon, the very well-known preacher, told the following story concerning the power of prayer in one's life. As Spurgeon was walking down the sidewalk one day, he heard a young man swearing and using God's name in vain. Walking up to the man, he touched the man on his shoulder and said, Can you pray as well as you swear? The young man laughed with a pompous type of attitude, declared that he had never indulged in anything so useless as prayer. Holding up a coin of considerable worth, Spurgeon said, I will give you this coin if you will promise me never to pray. Well, the young man with the glee in his face grabbed the coin, thrust it in his pocket, and went on chuckling to himself. As the day wore on, he began to feel very uneasy. Never to pray? Never? Perhaps he'd made a bad bargain, for he might want to call upon God someday if he should come to an urgent need. The more he thought about it, the more he became convinced that he had sold something very precious. He arrived home that evening and told his wife of the transaction and she was horrified. It is true, she said, we don't pray, but someday we may want to pray. Talking it over, the worried couple decided to see if they could find the one who had given them the coin and extracted such a promise. Mr. Spurgeon, on the other hand, had been hoping for such a response and he was soon located. Seeing their interest, he began to talk to them about Jesus and soon he had two new positions for Christ. Now, dear brothers and sisters, this story raises some questions for us here this morning. Has prayer become such a taken for granted part of our Christian life that we forget the great worth it truly is? Would you sell your privilege to pray for a valuable coin? After these questions have been asked, can we still ask more about prayer? Is prayer the way that we believe we can extract something from God? Is prayer used only like an ambulance in an, in an emergency? Do you see God as someone whom you can bargain with when it comes to a prayer request? As you can tell, this message this morning is about prayer and we want to talk a little bit more about prayer because I believe if there's nothing else we can do, we can pray. Now, for us to, to go through the subject can take us hours, even days. But we're not going to do that, rest assured. But what I would like to do is to look at a scripture and see what God has to say to us this morning. Let's turn together to, to the book of Luke, chapter 11. And we'll read together verses 1 to 13. The Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 11, verses 1 to 13. I'm reading to you from the New American Standard, and it says, And it came about that while Jesus was praying in a certain place. After he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, 
just as John also taught his disciples. And he said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. For we ourselves also forgive everyone who is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation. And he said to them, Suppose one of you have a friend and shall go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine has come to see me from a journey and I have nothing to set before him. And from inside he shall answer and say, Do not bother me. The door has already been shut and my children and I are in bed and I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, yet because of his persistence he will get up and give him as much as he needs. And I say to you, ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. And he who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, it shall be opened. Now suppose one of your, one of your fathers is asked by his son for a fish. He will not give him a snake instead of a fish, will he? Or if he asks for an egg, he will not give him a scorpion, will he? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him. And so Jesus is uh, asked a question, teach us to pray. They didn't ask, teach us to do some miracles like you did, teach us to preach like you can. Somehow the disciples knew that there was something very, very powerful about prayer. And they had no other request but this one request. Lord, teach us to pray. And so here the Lord gives instructions about prayer and I don't know where some commentators and and people have gone wrong and called this prayer the Lord's Prayer. It's not the Lord's Prayer. Because the Lord is not praying this prayer. He's giving us an example as to how we should pray. It's not His prayer. It's our prayer. So it's not the Lord's Prayer. What is the Lord's Prayer? The Lord's Prayer is the prayer that Jesus prayed before he went back to his Father, crying out to the Father that we will be one, crying out that there will be unity, but there's no unity. That is the Lord's Prayer, brothers and sisters, that we be one. And he says, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples. It was very painful to visit a village, a Christian village, where people are given the opportunity to build churches and, and, and worship. But the greatest pain was to see how the churches, pastors, people are getting along to such a degree that one church was burnt down but the members of another church. And all you have is the wall standing. Everything is totally burnt. It's because Christians cannot get along together that they will burn a church down. I believe that's 
prayer of Jesus, Lord, make them one. Make them one. In a country like Indonesia, where the Muslims are the majority, and where in one little area there's a Christian community, and it's there they can't get along together. It's there they want to kill one another. It's not the Muslims killing them, it's their own brothers. How sad. But before we point our fingers at them, it's happening right here. The only thing is that we haven't gone round to burning churches, but we've done far worse than that. We had a bus burned down. And so, we know what persecution means. We know what it means to stand for the Lord. The point I bring home to you is that this is not the Lord's prayer. This is your prayer. This is my prayer. And so Jesus is teaching us how to pray. And so we can tell the prayer is the most important part of our lives. It ought to be the most important part of our living. We need to set the scene to understand this lesson this morning to its fullest. Jesus was alone praying as was his custom. When one of his disciples comes to him and asks him, Lord, teach us to pray, then Jesus teaches them. Notice this version from the book of Luke is very different from the one in Matthew. But taken together, they form the prayer that Jesus is teaching us this morning. But I want you to notice that Jesus doesn't stop with this prayer. He goes on to tell them the parable about the man who needed bread for a late night guest. Somehow Jesus knew that the disciples, as they heard this prayer, would latch on to this idea of daily bread. This parable is more than a parable about being persistent in prayer. According to one commentator, Lenski, it is an encouragement, a strong encouragement to pray. Full stop. 